hot, humid day in early July. After the meal, everyone but Maria went back to their threshing. Maria sat sewing. She was only 11 years old, but her father, Luigi Garetti, had died, and her mother and brothers had to work on the fields. So the little girl was in charge of the household duties. They lived near Anzio, Italy, in a house they shared with Giovanni Serenelli, a widower, and his son, Alessandro, who was 19. This day, Giovanni sat down to rest, saying he was sick. Alessandro was taken with Maria's beauty and had for some time tried to seduce her. He spoke obscenely to her, made lewd suggestions, and threatened to kill Maria and her mother if she told anyone. No. No. One day, while he was supposed to be working in the fields, Alessandro entered the house looking for Maria. He called her, but she did not answer, going on with her sewing. This infuriated the hot, passionate youth, and he grabbed the girl, dragged her into the kitchen, and kicked the door shut. She fought him when he told her his intention. No, stop! This is a sin! Like, this is not what God wanted. Alessandro grew even more angry at her resistance. No, please, no, stop! Please! I beg of you, please stop it! She shouted for help, but the closed door was heavy, and the noise of the threshing was loud. No one heard her. She fell to the floor and dragged herself towards the door. She opened it. Alessandro ran for the door and slammed it on her. She screamed. Please, someone help me, please! This made him turn back. In a frenzy, he stabbed the girl such no, time. No, please, stop! Dropping the knife, he rushed to his room and locked the door. Alessandro's father, who was asleep, did not hear Maria shriek, but he woke up to the loud crying of the babies. He jumped up, found Maria in a pool of blood, and yelled wildly to the thresher. Oh, no, no, no. Maria's body was horribly mangled. It was a miracle that she was still even alive, because she could hardly breathe. When she saw her, her mother fell to the floor. <laughs> they asked, who did this terrible thing? And Maria whispered, in a nearby town. The police came to get the defiant Alessandro. A crowd of angry farmers surrounded the house. The police sent the war guards to take him away, but the mob wanted to lynch him on the spot. Lynch him! Lynch him! Lynch him! The doctors were astonished that the girl was even alive. Her pain-wrapped body was covered with blood. They said it was hopeless, and they called for the priest. Someone said, she is an angel. Maria was burning with fever and suffering, but she said, I'm all right. Her mother, in tears, gave her the crucifix to kiss, and that comforted her. The chaplain enrolled her in the Children of Mary, and the blessed medal was hung around her neck on a green ribbon. She kissed the medal often. She sincerely forgave Alessandro at her deathbed, as she fervently received Holy Communion for the last time. She said, I will find this as her mother and others asked her to pray for them in heaven, she died. This young girl, beautiful in body and soul, was canonized by Pope Pius XII on June 24, 1950. Her mother was present. Her feast day is July 6. The Holy Father, speaking of Maria, stressed the wholeness of her life. She, above all, stands for purity and heartfelt forgiveness, but also for love of the spiritual over the material, docility to parents, harsh daily labor and sacrifice and poverty, and a great love of Jesus in the Eucharist and devotion to his Holy Mother. Since her death, Maria has been the instrument of numerous cures and miracles. She appeared to Alessandro while he was in jail for her murder, and he repented and converted. Saint Maria Garetti, pray for us.